Hello, my name's Hayden. I'm a nature and landscape photographer based in Essex in the UK. And in this video, I thought we'd have a little talk about light meters and how it can change your photography. Understanding and reading light is a key skill that we can learn as a photographer. And there is no better tool to do that with than a light meter. What I thought we would do in this video is have a look at the light meter and see how we can use this tool to better understand our lighting in photography. This is a Gossen Luna 6 from the early 60s, which is the light meter that I'm currently using at the moment. I always prefer a light meter to have an analog dial over a digital readout. It's a lot easier to read all the shutter and aperture combinations. They're just right there in front of you on the dial rather than having to keep pressing a button on a digital meter to scroll through them. This meter is capable of doing incident readings by using this little lumosphere on the front. That slides across and I can also use it to do reflective readings and we'll have a look at how that works in just a minute. Okay so this particular handheld light meter is capable of reading light in two different ways. I can take a reflective light meter reading which is where I use the light meter to measure the light that's reflected off of the scene. I can also use an incident light meter reading where I'm measuring the light that's falling onto the scene. So I thought I'd demonstrate how you can take a reflective light meter reading first. You simply take your light meter and make sure that the little lumosphere or infocone or diffuser is not slid across. Bring in the light meter, take a reading and I can then dial that in on the exposure dial and I've got all my available shutter and aperture combinations there for me. Okay, so if I want to take an incident light meter reading, so that's the light that's falling onto the scene, I simply slide across the loom sphere, point it at the camera, take a light meter reading, and I've then measured the light that's falling onto my subject. There are many different scenarios where you might want to take a reflective light meter reading or an incident light meter reading. With a reflective light meter reading, the tonality and the colour of the subject that you are taking your meter reading from will make a difference. With a reflective light meter reading, we're obviously just measuring the light that's falling onto the subject. When shooting colour negative or black and white film, we normally expose for the shadows in the scene that we're photographing, and then we can worry about the highlights later on in developing and printing. One of the best things about using a handheld light meter is that I can measure the brightest part of the scene and the darkest part of the scene. And I can make sure that they're within the exposure latitude of the particular film stock that I've chosen to use. Another big plus of using a handheld light meter like this is that I can even make use of Ansel Adams' zone system in certain situations. But I won't delve too much into that in this video, as that's a bit of a lengthy subject. If you're new to film photography, you might be thinking to yourself, the camera that I've just bought has got a light meter built in. Do I really need a handheld light meter? But a handheld light meter is the next step towards levelling up your photography. You'll get a much better understanding of how light works. I hope you've enjoyed this video on how to take reflective and incident light meter readings. You can find links to my website, Facebook and Instagram in the description of the video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.